This is WKYT This Morning. Good morning. It's so nice to have you with us Tuesday here on WKYT. I'm Bill Bryant. I'm Rebecca Smith. January 26th is the day. The rise and shine, and now it's 6.30, developing news in eastern Kentucky, where a couple is missing after their home has caught fire overnight. A federal judge ruled in favor of the owners of a biblically themed park in Kentucky. And in a game that went down to the wire, the UK women's team pulls off the upset over Tennessee. Have some showers moving through this morning. They will fade as we go throughout the morning and off into the afternoon hours. Temperatures in the 40s. Amazing feel this morning. But let me tell you, this afternoon will look much different and feel much different too. I'll talk all about that forecast coming up. WKYT now beginning with developing news out of eastern Kentucky this morning where crews remain at the scene of a house fire in Pike County. They have yet to find the elderly couple who lives there. Firefighters say it's just too dangerous right now for them to go into the home on US 60 in the Farrells Creek community. This fire started around midnight. Crews say the couple's cars are still parked outside of the home. Our calls to state police have not been returned. Stay with us and WKYT.com for the very latest information. Obviously hoping for the best and uh, suspecting the worst in that situation this morning. Well, tonight, uh, Governor Matt Bevan will be unveiling his first two-year state spending plan. The governor already calling for the state to generate more money to fill shortfalls in the public retirement systems, but he says he will not raise taxes to do that. WKYT's Mark Barber is live for us in Frankfurt to explain what else we can hear from the governor tonight. Good morning, Rebecca. Lawmakers will certainly be watching very closely tonight to see how Governor Matt Bevan plans to address the state's pension crisis without raising taxes. Now, those who may be watching even more closely tonight, hundreds of thousands of police officers, teachers, and state workers whose futures really are directly connected to the state's faltering retirement system. Now, when Bevan gives his uh, budget proposal tonight around 7 o'clock, he's expected to say that he will fix that issue without raising taxes. Instead, he says he plans to find extra money, rather, to put toward the pension problem. That means some funds could be shaved away from other programs, and some programs that hope to see extra money in this budget cycle may not see any. Democratic leaders have said they don't want the state to carry the burden right now. They'd much rather borrow money for pensions so the state will have time to find a long-term solution. Bevan, however, does not think it's wise to borrow more debt in order to pay off our debts. So we'll see if lawmakers from both parties are able to agree on tonight's proposal. Now, Bevan's speech will be televised at 7 o'clock tonight, so many people still waiting to see whether his plan will include any chance of saving their likelihoods and their future retirement plans. Live in Frankfurt, Mark Barber, WKYT. We'll have to wait and see. Thanks so much, Mark. Owners of marinas on Lake Cumberland say the winter storm caused millions of dollars in damage to their business. Roofs and docks collapsed under the weight of heavy snow and ice. Officer Don shot this very dramatic video, as you can see there, um, yesterday from Sky First. You can see the damage at Grider Hill Marina in Clinton County. What well, was the same scene over in Pulaski County? The owner of Lee's Ford Marina estimates that the uh, storm can uh, cause at least four million dollars in damage. Multiple docks collapsed there, and more than 200 covered slips are damaged. Also in southern Kentucky and Wayne County, heavy snow caused the roofs of a couple of businesses to collapse. Both Reed's Automotive and McCutcheon Antiques have extensive damage. Reed's owner says he lost five cars and all of the equipment inside the business. Wayne County officials also say the snow damaged several chicken processing and research facilities. This was the first major winter storm that Lexington had had since this new snow removal plan was put in place last year. And according to local leaders, it worked great. The city changed how it prioritizes which streets to clear first. The biggest change this year was that the city set aside extra money to hire more contractors. We're still waiting to see how much that storm will end up costing the city. The mayor's office says it could take several weeks to tally up the total. The impact of the weekend snowstorm is still impacting many school districts across the Commonwealth. We have more than 70 school closings and delays this morning. You can find that complete list at WKYT.com. New this morning, police are looking for whoever's responsible for robbing a Lexington Speedway. Police say a man with a carving knife stole cash and cigarettes from the Speedway on New Circle at Meadow Lane around 3 o'clock this morning. They say he was wearing a gray hoodie and jeans. 
A federal judge has ruled in favor of the owners of the Noah's Ark theme park in northern Kentucky. The lawsuit was over tax breaks worth millions of dollars. WKYT's Mike Byer has been looking over the case. He's joining us from our live desk with more. Mike? A federal judge has ruled that Kentucky can't block the Ark Encounter theme park from taking part in sales tax rebate program just because the park advances religion. The Christian Broadcast Network says Kentucky wasn't going to let the park enjoy the tax rebate because of developer AIG's religious beliefs, purpose, mission, and message. Now the judges ordered the state to move forward in processing AIG's application for the available tax rebate incentives that would become effective after the ARC opens this fall or this summer. And it began early February. This all began in early February when AIG filed a lawsuit against Kentucky. They accused the state of blocking their application to take part in the sales tax incentive program because of the ARC project's religious messaging and hiring preferences. As for the theme park itself, the 510-foot recreation of Noah's Ark is still on schedule to open July 7th in Williamstown right off of I-75. At the live desk, Mike Byer, WKYT. All right, Mike, thank you. 636 now on WKYT this morning, and a man is in jail accused of violating a Bell County cemetery. Middlesboro police say Lloyd Knuckles drove his truck right through the Lynch Cemetery on Friday and in the process damaged at least three gravestones. Police say Knuckles told them that he was at the cemetery to visit family buried there, but he didn't know where their graves were. He is charged with criminal mischief and violating graves. A Harrison County man admits to scamming his elderly neighbor out of more than $20,000. The Kentucky Attorney General's Office says 25-year-old Raymond Wainscott pleaded guilty to theft by deception. He's agreed to a five-year prison sentence along with paying restitution. Investigators have not said how the victim was scanned out of so much money. A federal appeals court has rejected a request from the coal industry to delay new rules on dust monitoring in underground mines. The National Mining Association and several coal companies asked the court to halt the implementation of a rule that is set to take effect on February 1st. That rule would increase the number of air samples taken in underground mines. More bad news for Kentucky House Democrats. State Representative Johnny Bell says he will not seek re-election. The Glasgow Democrat says he had business interests that he needs to tend to back at home. His decision could complicate efforts by Democrats to hold on to their fragile House majority. The UK hoops pulled off a thriller in Lexington last night. They took down the Tennessee Lady Vols in a close one. Tennessee led for much of the game inside Memorial Coliseum last night. It wasn't until the second half when Kentucky's Michaela Epps turned it on. She ended up scoring a game high 23 points. The hoops win it with a close one, 64 to 63. A fun win, really, uh, for uh, the uh, Kentucky women, and they, yeah. they roll on. And Let's get uh, a check of traffic yeah, right now. See what's happening, 638 the time. Here's Officer Don with a check on live drive traffic. Good morning, Don. Good morning. There is a stalled car on the inner loop of Man of War at Parker's Mill right now. It's just blocking the right lane. They should have that cleared in the next few minutes. Overall traffic view, of course the roads are wet. That's something we have to deal with, but in a lot better shape than what we've seen. Things are getting better and better out there. As we get a live look at Lexington traffic flow this morning, uh, looks like we're okay. Overall picture as far as drive times go, there's really nothing to warn you about. It looks like we're going to have a normal ride in. Just be extra careful on the bridges and overpasses, but I don't think ice is going to be a big factor for us this morning. Uh, normal drive Five times coming in from Richmond across the Clays Ferry Bridge. Also from Paris this morning on Paris Pike, where police are running radar, by the way, uh, near the, uh, the Fayette Bourbon County line. Now back to you in the studio. All right, keep that in mind. And also the rain out there this morning, which is uh, at least better than the snow. Oh, it, was it is. <laughs> a tough one over the last few days. Hey, it's great to have you with us on WKYT this morning, getting ready for your Tuesday. One Houston police officer got to handpick his new four leg partner. <laughs> See how Tico was a paw above the rest when we come back. The rain is moving through pretty quickly. Once it pushes on out, then we'll see those temperatures really drop off the map. We'll talk all about that forecast coming up next. Now, your hour by hour forecast with meteorologist Micah Harris. Now, as we take you hour by hour, it's going to be totally different from this morning to this afternoon as we continue to see that front push on through. With the front, you get the rain showers, and you're holding on to those down toward the south and the east. That's for the most part, and we're going to zoom on in and show you that. Lexington, we have about, I would say, 30 minutes to an hour before we call it quits with all the rain. 
But you look down south and east, Tigersville all the way to Jackson. Uh, go off toward Beattyville and Boonville, picking up the heavier downpours at the moment. But heads up Campton as it slides right to you here in just the next five minutes. And also Jackson in the next five to ten minutes. That heavier rain, it's not heavy, but heavier rain really does pick on. Uh, we get a dry slot from Waynesburg to Somerset all the way to Monticello. Uh, work your way into, say, Russell Springs in Columbia. Nothing really going on. Work your way off into 150 and also 68. A few light showers. But this area right through here, if you work your way, say, to Springfield, Springfield, you're done with the rain. But you go over toward Mackville, still holding on to a few showers for the next few minutes, and then it slides eastbound. So, yeah, the far western zones, Bardstown, you're, you're over with with any rain. Now you're going to start seeing those temperatures really take a dive. 37 degrees there in Fort Knox, but you look over toward our region, we're sitting there in the mid 40s and even some 50s over toward the east southeast. Drop that 10 degrees later on this afternoon. So do not prepare for the 40s and 50s. You need to prepare for the 30s later on today. Here comes that front pushing on through, and the rain, I would say around noontime to about 3 p.m., is when it gets out of the far southeastern zones. Lexington, like I said, another 30 minutes to an hour, and we will be over with, with any rain. Can't rule out a couple of flurries as that cold air sinks on in. Look at 4 p.m., 34 degrees here in Lexington. Remember, we've already hit our high. Temperatures really take a dive. 37 there in London by 4 p.m. And then that rain really does move out in the southeast. Here comes the coldest air overnight and into tomorrow morning. Not a big shot of cold air and even a few flurries too, but no big issues out of that one. But we're in the 20s as opposed to the single digits and teens where we have been the past few weeks. So tomorrow, flurries are possible. That's the coldest day at 32 degrees for an afternoon high is tomorrow. Thursday and Friday, we jump back up 30s and 40s. Maybe, maybe a few flakes there on Friday. It's a small chance. And then the weekend, check that out. Huge warm up. 50s for both days. 52 on Saturday, 55 there on Sunday. So after 36 today, 32 tomorrow, we'll start to see those temperatures rise. And guys, this weekend looks phenomenal. If you do not have any plans for this weekend, make them because it'll be a really, really nice feel, especially what we have been through. Comparing it to that, uh, remember, it's all relative. And uh, yeah, this is going to be a nice weekend in sort. Yeah. Really good looking weekend. A lot of people happy. Oh, Make yeah. You think a little bit about spring, right? Yeah, it does. <laughs> yeah. And then it teases you, right? Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah back it to, goes back yeah. and all that. But uh, we'll get there sooner or later. 645 is our time right now. What has been a really emotional yeah. journey for one Houston police officer after losing his canine partner in the line of duty? But now Officer Ryan Davis has a new partner that he picked out himself. Davis says one dog stood out from the rest of the Houston Canine Academy. That dog is his new partner, Tuco. The pair will head back to Canton, Ohio today, and once they're used to each other, Tuco's training will officially begin. It's really a, a, a very interesting full story on that about what happened with the other dog uh, uh, in a robbery situation. He was really heartbroken, but uh, now Tuco uh, is going to be his new partner. Oh, yeah. Good dog. Good deal. Good to have you with us now on WKYT this morning. Hope you'll stay there. CBS this morning, a few minutes away. Yeah, we have more when we return. Coming up, LaGuardia Airport gridlocked and the federal government still shut down. How New York and Washington are coping with the big dig out. Plus, we're in Iowa after Sanders and Clinton's final major pitches to caucus voters. More real news coming up on CBS This Morning next. Time this morning is 6.49, and there they are getting ready to go at CBS in New York. And a look at the top jobs for 2016 ahead on CBS this morning. Find out which ones have high salaries and a strong work-life balance. It's ahead on CBS this morning. We have a developing story out of eastern Kentucky. Crews remain on scene of a house fire in Pike County. They've yet to find the elderly couple living there. Firefighters say it is just too dangerous for them to go into the home, which is on U.S. 460 in the Farrells Creek community. The fire started around midnight this morning. Crews say the couple's cars are still parked outside of the home. Our calls to state police have not yet been returned. Stay with WKYT News and WKYT.com for the latest on that. Tonight, Governor Matt Bevan will unveil his first two-year state spending plan for the Commonwealth. The governor is already calling for the state to generate more money to fix shortfalls in public retirement systems. But he says he will not be raising taxes to do that. The governor plans to use any excess state revenue for pensions. The teacher's retirement system alone needs an extra $1 billion dollars 
dollars over the next two years. Governor Bevan will be giving his budget address at 7 o'clock tonight. It will air live on KET. A federal judge has ruled in favor of the owners of the Noah's Ark theme park in northern Kentucky. The judge says the Ark Encounter in Grant County should qualify for tourism related tax credits from the state. The state withdrew its offer of tax breaks because it said the park planned to discriminate against job applicants based on religion. The park then sued, and the judge upheld the park's right to hire people based on their religious beliefs. Well, new this morning, police are looking for the person responsible for robbing a Lexington Speedway. Police say a man with a carving knife stole cash and cigarettes from the Speedway on New Circle at Meadow Lane around 3 o'clock this morning. They say he was wearing a gray hoodie and jeans. Also new on WKYT this morning, Lexington police are investigating a smash and grab at the BP on Winchester Road. This is across from the Jeff Peanut Butter plant. They say someone used a rock from the parking lot to smash through a front door before stealing cartons of cigarettes. Well, four people managed to escape from a burning Boyle County home. Firefighters spent hours at the home on Highway 68 in Perryville. No one was hurt, but it took them a long time to put out the fire and handle hot spots. Firefighters say much of the home was gutted by the fire. In Lexington, a man's apartment was damaged when a kitchen fire quickly spread. Firefighters say one man in the apartment on Cambridge Drive taken to the hospital with minor burns. The man who lives in the apartment is not allowed to stay there at the moment. Democratic and Republican presidential candidates continue to make a big push for Iowa voters less than a week before the state's caucuses. Hillary Clinton touted her experience during a town hall in Iowa last night, while rival Bernie Sanders sought to explain his Democratic Socialist label. On the Republican side, Donald Trump described Ted Cruz as a nasty guy. As Cruz continued to blast Trump's values. Two anti abortion activists who prompted an investigation into Planned Parenthood are now facing criminal charges themselves. A Texas grand jury handed down indictments against David Deladen and Sandra Merritt for allegedly tampering with a governmental record. The pair were behind secretly recorded videos allegedly showing Planned Parenthood employees trying to sell fetal tissue for profit. President Barack Obama says he will ban the use of solitary confinement for juvenile and low-level offenders in federal prisons. Writing in an op-ed piece in the Washington Post's website, Obama wrote that solitary confinement for juveniles has been linked to depression, alienation, and withdrawal. Obama asked the Justice Department to review the use of solitary confinement last summer. In Washington, D.C. this morning, federal offices and schools are closed. Parts of the Northeast still digging out from a weakened blizzard. Forecasters are watching a system that could bring another big storm by the weekend. Area airports that experience thousands of delays and cancellations struggling to return to a normal flight schedule. But a quick check of the flight status board at Lexington's Bluegrass Airport shows no problems. Is good news locally. Our timer this morning coming up on 654. And right now on WKYT.com, Kentuckians await Governor Matt Bevin's budget proposal later today. We'll see what he may propose cutting to more fully fund the state's troubled retirement systems. The governor lays out his plan at 7 o'clock tonight. Now, we still have more than 70 school closings or delays. Kentucky continuing to dig out from that big winter wallop. Some of the back roads and side streets are still slick this morning, even though we have had the the warmer weather, and it's warmer out there this morning. We're in the mid-40s right now. WKYT talked to a couple in southern Kentucky who have been without power since the winter storm hit Friday morning, and they describe how they have gotten by with candlelight and a few snacks that they had on hand. For a lot of Kentuckians, it's always fun to beat Tennessee, and the Wildcat women had that thrill last night when they rallied from 10 points down to beat the Lady Vols on the court. The score was 64 to 63. You can check out our story and Coach Matthew Mitchell's comments about that wild game on our website this morning. On Kentucky.com, the story of how a U.K. professor has changed the focus of his research after his son's autism diagnosis. Now he's working to help children and families deal with autism. CBS This Morning is coming up shortly at 7 with your eye opener. Of course, we'll have local updates as well. There they are, Charlie and uh, all the gang getting ready to go at the CBS Broadcast Center in New York. Now, join us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter or Instagram, and for the latest news anytime, WKYT.com. And we're looking at current uh, traffic, and nothing really going on across the way. Things are looking pretty good. Don't forget, keep in mind that you do have some rain out and about. That'll lead to some wet roadways. The good news is...
No frozen spots expected this morning. None at all. Temperatures are really, really warm. Nicholasville drive into Lexington is 13 minutes on average. Winchester looks pretty good, roughly 20 minutes. And Richmond, Mount Sterling, roughly 30 minutes as you're heading off into Lexington. Here's a look across the way rain wise. Now, rain wise, there's not a lot. But there is enough to cause some of these roadways to be a bit wet, especially over toward the east and southeastern zones. Let me show you this. This is the back edge of this front right through here. So give it another 15 to 45 minutes. Lexington will be over with with the rain. Frankfurt, you are done with the rain. Maybe some drizzle here and there the next several hours because of those low clouds streaming on through. But the rain will absolutely be situated over toward the east and the southern zones throughout the next few hours. Now we're going to be looking at temperatures. Check these out. We're at 40s all over the area. I want you to look back toward Fort Knox, though, 37 degrees. Do not plan for the 40s and 50s later on today. We've already hit our high today. It'll drop off as we go throughout the afternoon. So expect your afternoon temperature actually be there in the mid 30s. But the good news here is, once again, don't expect any frozen spots out there today. It's we've had the 40s, guys, from yesterday afternoon overnight into early this morning. But remember, it does drop off as we get off into the afternoon hours. It's going to be pretty chilly. Keep that in mind. All right. All right. Take your coat. It looks a little warm this morning. Yeah. Hey, nobody is more up to date than you to start your day. Thank you so much for being with us here on WKYT. CBS This Morning's next. Have an awesome day.